my teammates, uh, still running the team now and operating throughout the state of California, are still getting into grow sites where they find assault rifles, pistols, knives, uh, booby traps, punji pits, you know, anti-personnel traps of people that would walk into a grow site. California passed Prop 64 to eliminate the illegal marijuana market. But six years later, the black market is thriving and becoming more brazen as cartels are buying out homes and land to grow marijuana illegally. The problem stems from largely, you know, the controversy over Prop 64. We regulated cannabis in California. The problem was how we regulated. I always said, look, if we're going to regulate, let's regulate smartly. Don't take any incentive for the black market to thrive. My guest today is John Norris Jr., retired special ops game warden lieutenant and author of the book Hidden War. Today he'll discuss how the illegal marijuana growers operate and why the cannabis black market is thriving despite California's efforts to legalize it. It doesn't matter where you sit on the political spectrum. It doesn't matter where your frame of mind is. If there's environmental impacts, it's hurting our environment, stealing our water, destroying our wildlife. And if there's a public safety threat to our people out there, that's a no-brainer. That's absolutely unacceptable. So politics aside, that cannot happen. I'm Siamai Korami. Welcome to California Insider. Mac, thanks for having me on. Great to be here today. We want to talk to you about a phenomena that's been happening in California. We have cartels now coming and illegally taking over towns in California, and they're actually illegal marijuana growers. Can you tell us what's going on? Definitely, and I'll start with a little bit of background, Mac, about how I got involved and how you know my previous agency that I retired from three years ago in 2018, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, as law enforcement officers. And after a 28-year career, I did you know that the first half of my career, but the last half was related to what you just brought up, these trespass illegal cannabis growers, a majority of them being from cartel groups out of Mexico, all over California. It started for me working with the sheriff's office in the Silicon Valley where I was born and raised. Um, kind of mind-blowing to think at the tech capital of the world and the affluent Silicon Valley, all the foothills circumferencing the Silicon tech capital is, was loaded with cartel growers growing poison, tainted marijuana, slated for the black market under everybody's noses. And that's when we first got wind of this going on and it continues to this day. And it's uh, spreading to Southern California in some counties where uh, cartels are actually buying land and growing. Is, is that what's happening, right? We have seen that. One of the things we started to see when I was about to retire, a lot of private land infiltration by not only the cartels, but by other illegal elements, um, Chinese gangs, uh, Russian mob, Armenians, uh, you know, different type of criminal groups outside of the cartels. But we're seeing a lot of them on private land. Uh, one example that was um, just really blatant where we saw a ton of this was in the Antelope Valley recently and our studio that I'm talking to you at today right here is in Orange County and not too far into LA County into our Southern California desert. We had a situation where multiple allied agencies raided, executed 205 search warrants this last summer all on illegal cannabis production indoor, usually the large hoop houses, greenhouses, but we're talking massive, massive, you know, a massive footprint of illegal cannabis. None of these were licensed cannabis growers, regardless of uh, regulating under Prop 64, now almost five years ago. But in this Antelope Valley situation, we had 205 search warrants executed, approximately 375,000 illegal unregulated marijuana plants, cannabis plants, um, eliminated. And the figure I heard from the head sheds of DEA out of Southern California just recently was so much water was being stolen in that particular area to the point of approximately 6.8 million gallons of water between LA, San Bernardino, and Riverside counties alone per day based on what they calculated on this raid. And that raid apparently only dealt with 50 to 60 percent of the unregulated cannabis in that part of the Southern California desert. And there's still a ton of it going on, not only in Southern California, but in all counties throughout the state. Now, can you tell me more about how these illegal cartels operate, like whether they're in the, in the mountains and, or whether you had personal experiences sure. going after them, right? We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these cartel grows in the outdoors and the wildlands. 
And the environmental impacts were so severe that that's why we got involved as game wardens because the amount of water they divert at the headwaters of these pristine waterways absolutely kills everything below it because there's not a drinking source. Aquatics, fish, people that need drinking water, uh, cattle, agriculture, any of those things were impacted by it. The other thing about these cartel groups is they're incredibly dangerous. We were finding weapons and still continue to this day. My, my teammates, uh, still running the team now and operating throughout the state of California, are still getting into growth sites where they find assault rifles, pistols, knives, uh, booby traps, punji pits, you know, anti-personnel traps of people that would walk into a grow site. Um, they're still finding the EPA banned poisons, carbofuran, metafos, cufuran, which basically are nerve agents and anticoagulant, very, very toxic poisons that are banned from general use in the U.S. by the EPA over 20 years ago because they're so toxic. And the cartels use these poisons on the marijuana plants, on the bud flower that's used and consumed, it makes it into the waterways, it's the base of plants. We've seen it actually in check dams because this stuff keeps everything off the plants, right? Pretty much kills anything within its reach within minutes. A 400 pound black bear, a 200 pound mountain lion. We've seen all kinds of animals killed immediately and if it's ingested in the wrong way, it could be deadly, if not extremely debilitating to the human body as well. So based on what it looks like, these people, they were in the wildlife areas around counties hiding now they're coming and buying property and they're growing there. From what we have looked into, if they stop growing, they can come back and do it again. Is that what's happening here? Yeah, the problem stems from largely, you know, the controversy over Prop 64. Um, we regulated cannabis in California. Um, it's been over five years now. Um, when I retired, we had had regulated cannabis under Prop 64 for about two years. And in the final chapters of my latest book, Hidden War, I go into, which was the big question that everybody wanted to know, how g did re is regulation working? Did Prop 64 solve the problem? Did it stop you know, the trespass grow market, the black market? Did it stop the indoor illegal market or the black market? And unfortunately, the answer is no. And a lot of it had to do with not that we regulated because under proper cannabis regulation, I think we could, if not eliminate significantly, hinder the black market. The problem was how we regulated. And I always said, look, if we're gonna regulate, let's regulate smartly. Don't take any incentive for the black market to thrive. Let's not incentivize the black market, let's deter it. So let's keep illegal cannabis a felony. And unfortunately, when Prop 64 was enacted, it was kind of heartbreaking because illegal cannabis production now went down to a misdemeanor from a felony. It went from a misdemeanor to an infraction for a juvenile grower. And we've seen in cartel grow sites, these juvenile growers that are under a cartel umbrella, they're learning the ropes, some of them are very violent, and they're in grow sites doing massive poisoning and massive public safety threats and destruction of wildlife. So when you make it a misdemeanor, and cannabis is now regulated in the state of California, you don't have a lot of incentive to prosecute those cases and to put those people in jail and to really put deterrence on them. So the cartels have come to indoor areas. They've come onto private property. They've teamed up with private land growers, other groups. We hear they're working hand in hand with uh, some of the Chinese gangs, some of, like I said, the Armenian groups and things like that. And they're working cooperatively because if they do get busted, nine times out of 10, they're gonna lose their plants for the operation they're running. But if they don't get caught, they're making millions and millions and millions of black market dollars.